sections 5.1 and 5.2 in this video uh, as a way to help you study and prepare for your exam three that's coming up this week. Uh, the first objective we're gonna talk about is factoring out the greatest common factor. So here's the basic approach you wanna take with these problems. You wanna ask yourself, what do I have in common? So for the case of, of letter A, it says 54M minus 45. And what you wanna realize here is that we don't have a repeating variable. So we wanna work on what factors of 54 and 45 are in common. So just focusing on the, on the numbers. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I just want to pull my notes out so you guys can realize that even I use my notes constantly. Um, although, granted, it's 1 a.m., so I just wanted to have, it, have them out. Um, so what we can find out here is that the factors of 54 and 45 actually share a 9. Okay. And if you take 54 and divide it by nine, you will get six with our M left. And then 45 divided by nine is of course five. Okay, five and six don't share anything but one. So we're done. Okay. Now on the exam, if it says factor out the greatest common factor, you can of course tell me that the GCF is nine, but this is how they want it written. Um, for B, you guys know that two and seven only share a one in common. So you can say that it's prime. You can say it's already in factored form, or you can say, there is no common factor other, oh, just write it a little bit nicer to period. There is no common factor other than one, okay? Any of those are going to get you your points. If you really, really wanted to, you could just leave it like that, but you would have to tell me that you're leaving it like that, not that that is your final, you know, not leaving it blank in other words. So I would highly recommend one of the written things, but all right. Again, here we can see that 18, is our common factor for C. So we would have one plus three R left. Now you might be wondering, how can I figure out if I, sh if I have a common factor or not? Well, if you need to start low, um, 54 and 45, here's your hint. They both add up to nine. So nine goes into both of them. 18 and 54 are both even. So you could start with two and work from there. You guys get to use your calculators on your exams. So really you should be able to uh, figure most of these out. So again, uh, here, if you wanted to list your GCF, it would be 18. Okay. Uh, again, we are asked to find the greatest common factor and not only that, but to factor it out. So for A, uh, our GCF here is actually going to be 8y cubed. So what you need to realize is that sometimes we're going to have variables. A lot of times we'll have variables. And you need to go with the exponent that is the least uh, when you're talking about common factors. So. What we would have left here is we would say 8y cubed on the outside, and then we have 
2y plus 1 left on the inside. Again, you're dividing to figure out what's left inside. Here we have 14p squared minus 9p cubed plus 6p to the fourth. Um, we don't really have anything that's in common in terms of the numbers. So we're just gonna focus on the variables. And for this case, we wanna look for the p that has the lowest uh, power. So that would be p squared. So we're gonna have p squared on the outside, 14 minus 9p plus 6p squared. And if we wanted to check our work, all we would have to do is distribute back in and we should get back to our question. Um, the GCF for C, we have 9x cubed y squared minus 3x squared y squared plus 6y squared, or sorry, x squared y cubed. Um, your GCF is actually one of your terms, 3x squared y squared. So we will have 3x left minus 1 plus two y. Oops, um, let me get that part out of there. I'll rewrite it. Okay. So remember our approaches are, you have to figure out what the greatest number is that goes into the numbers. So the greatest factor for the numbers. And then in terms of the variables, you're looking for the, the lowest powered variable that they all share, okay? Uh, for this one, so these ones are interesting. You have to look for what's common and that's the repeated uh, parentheses set. So we're gonna pull that GCF out, which is three X minus two. So we'll have three X, let me write that better for you guys. Sorry, I'm obviously getting tired and it's just the beginning of my videos tonight. And then you would, write the remaining ones down. So that would be x plus one plus two x minus five. And then what we can do here is just um, combine those terms that are left. So here three x and two x will give us three x. So if we write three x minus two, then we'll have three x and then one, minus five will give us a minus four. Okay. Some of you guys during class asked and wanted to know, could we have foiled these, combined all of our terms and then factored and gotten to here? The answer is yes. Um, just a minute. Okay. So if you guys are interested, I do not mind working through this problem the long way, uh, but we're not gonna have enough room on here. So let me pull over to this screen. Thank you actually know it's better for you guys if I'm this way. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, we would have three X minus two x plus one plus three x minus two two x minus five okay let's go ahead and foil just for the sake of seeing how long it would take to do this problem if we couldn't notice what the gcfs were So we would have three X squared minus two X uh, 
plus 3x minus 2 plus 3, nope, nope, plus 6x squared minus 4x minus 15x plus 10. All right, let's combine our like terms. All right, so 3x squared and 6x squared are going to give us 9x squared. Um, negative 2x plus 3x will give us just an x. And negative 4x minus 15x will give us negative 19x. We're going to add those, so we'll get negative 18x. And then negative 2 plus 10 will be another um, 8. All right. So what we can see here is that uh, factors of 9 are 1 and 9, 3 and 3. So um, we don't have anything that will pull out. So no GCF. Um, we also have a trinomial with a lead coefficient greater than 1. So what we would do is we would take 9 times 8, which will give us 72. We want factors of 72 that will give us 18 in the middle. So let's figure these factors out. Again, if you don't remember how to find a factor, you just take the number you're looking for and you'll divide. And you just start and keep going until you can't go anymore. Okay. All right. Okay, so here are the two factors that are going to help us. So, and we actually need both of them to be negative because that'll give us a negative 18. So let's do 9x squared minus 6x plus minus 12x plus 8. Here we can pull out a 3x and we get x minus, sorry, not x, we get 3x minus 2. And here we can pull out a 4, negative 4, so we'll get 3x minus 2. And we have 3x minus 2, 3x minus 4. And that, I believe, is what we had originally, and it is. So you guys can see it was a lot more work to go ahead and do the double foil. But we got to the same answer in the end, and that's what's important. So if you guys really can't figure out that the GCFs there match as those um, parentheses sets, then um, you would have a much longer road ahead of you. But it is not undoable or not impossible to figure out. So, um, you know, keep that in mind, too. So what we realize here is that we have an expression to the second power that is the GCF. So we're going to pull it out. And what's left is going to be z times a minus b minus 2w. But we need to distribute this so we can finalize our answer to be ZA minus ZB minus 2W. Uh, I probably would have been fine if you just got to the first part, but this is most correct. Okay. Um, this one is the one where we have to factor this in two different ways. 
So the first way you can factor is you can say, well, I have a GCF equal to Y. So I'm going to pull a Y out and I'll have negative 4Y to the fourth minus 3Y squared plus 8. Or we can have a GCF of negative y, and then we're going to be left with 4y to the fourth plus 3y squared minus 8. In a way, uh, it doesn't really matter, except that you want to sometimes you will want to have certain items be negative so that you can see a GCF. And if that's the case, then you wanna um, you'll want to work on on remembering that you can pull out a negative. Okay. Um, this one, we're gonna work it like it's a grouping problem. So, and we're going to pull out a three. And here we'll pull out an X. Your parentheses match. So you're just going to bring the outsides together and rewrite your parentheses set. All right, this one, same thing, going to, but I really highly recommend when you have this negative here that you do a plus minus, okay? So we're gonna pull out an A, we're gonna have B minus seven. We're gonna pull out a negative five and we'll have B minus seven. B minus seven, both parentheses sets match. So you're gonna have A minus five, B minus seven. And there we go. Again, if you foiled, you would end up getting back to where you are or where you began. Okay, um, steps for grouping. Collect the terms into groups so that each group has a common factor. Sometimes you might have to rearrange the problem to, to get this to happen. Factor within the groups, factor out the common factor in each group. Factor the entire polynomial. If each group now has a common factor, factor it out. If not, try a different grouping. Always check the factor form by multiplying. Okay, so here what we can do is we could choose to rearrange this. So let's rearrange this to be 3ax minus a uh, plus 2y minus 6xy. And we might have to rearrange it again to get your final answer to match, but that'll be okay. So let's pull an a out. And we'll get 3x minus 1. Here we'll pull a 2 out, a 2y. And we'll get 1 minus 3x. So here what we want to notice is that our 3x minus 1 and our 1 minus 3x are very similar. We just have to pull out a negative now. So we're going to have a minus a times 3x minus 1 plus 2y times negative 1. And that's going to give us a negative 1 plus 3x. All right now, now our insides match because if we rewrote this one, we could rewrite it as 3x minus 1. So they match. So we're bringing the outside terms together. Here we would take 2y minus or times negative one and get negative two y. 
Again, if you foiled, you should get back to your original problem. All right. Mm. Let's rearrange again. Let's do 2K P squared minus 4K plus six minus three P squared. Again, we might have to rearrange, but there's nothing wrong with that. Let's pull out a 2K. Gonna have P squared minus two left. Let's pull out a three. We're gonna have two minus P squared left. Again, we're going to rearrange the second part. And we're going to pull out a negative one. So we'll end up with negative two plus p squared. So 2k p squared minus two. And then minus three. That's what that becomes. And then we can rewrite this as p squared minus two. Our parentheses match. So we have 2k minus three times p squared minus two. If you foiled, you would end up back at the beginning. All right, now exercise nine is very important because what you wanna realize is we have an overall GCF. So overall GCF is equal to four. So we're gonna pull a four out and you're gonna leave it and it'll be in your final answer. So if we pull that out, four divided by 12 W gives us three WY. Then we would have 24 divided by four. That gives us six XY plus WZ minus two XZ. Okay. Now we're going to group so let's do we can leave them in the groups they're in so three w y minus six x y plus w z minus two x z notice when you kind of talk it out even if you were on the test and you had to talk it silently Talking it out can often help you figure out what's repeated, at least, especially with the variables. So 3y will leave you with w minus 2x plus z will leave you with w minus 2x. Your parentheses match. So we have four w minus 2x times 3y plus z. Again, if you FOIL and then distribute your four, you should get right back to there after checking. Okay. All right, what we're gonna move on to next is section 5.2, factoring trinomials. Um, we're going to have a couple different options going on. Um, we're going to have um, we're going to have situations where the x squared leading term is one, and we'll have situations where the x squared leading term is uh, Is, is anything other than one, all right? So um, these are the ones where you're most likely gonna see that connection between foiling, okay? So here the question says, or the steps are for factoring x squared plus bx plus c, where the coefficient of the second degree term, so your leading term is equal to one, 
first you want to find the pairs of the integers who produce the product that is C, find the sum of each pair, and then factor the trinomial as a set as the product of two binomials. Okay. If there is no pair of integers in step two whose sum is B, then the polynomial cannot be factored. A polynomial that cannot be factored with the integer coefficients is a prime polynomial. And here they give you three examples of primes. Oops. Okay. So for this case, we want to look at t squared minus t minus 30. First things first is we have a leading term of leading coefficient of one. So we just want to look at the last situation or last, sorry, last term. So we'll have 30. We want factors of 30 that add or subtract to give us a difference of one. And that's going to be five and six. So we're going to take t squared. We're going to have minus 6t plus 5t minus 30. We're then just going to do our grouping like we have been. Our parentheses match, so we'll bring our outsides together. And we're done. To check it, if you foiled, you will get right back to where you started. Now, it's very important that you also remember that you could have a common, a greatest common factor in any single um, problem, uh, factoring problem. So you want to make sure that you, wow, I don't know where this is coming from, it's a circle, but it's here, I guess. Okay, go away. Sorry, guys. I don't know why that circle is there, but we'll try to do our best to ignore it. Um, interesting. All right, whatever. So we for this one, we want our factors of the last term, which is 32. Um, all right, so factors of 32 are one and 32, two and 16, and four and eight. We want factors that will add or subtract to give us 12, so that'll be 4 and 8. So it's going to be w squared minus 4w plus minus 8w plus 32. You're going to group these. We're going to pull out a w. You're going to have w minus 4 minus, uh, yeah, minus 8, which is w minus 4. So w minus 4 and w minus eight. It does not matter if you would were to write w minus eight, w minus four. Does not matter which way you do that. Um, all right, questions on that? Well, there can't be, because I just realized I'm recording. All right, solid. You will have to email me if you have questions, all right? Okay, and apparently I forgot to get rid of that. So that helps you out a little bit. So here what we would wanna do is we would wanna focus on 11. We have factors of 11 are just one and 11. Well, 
we can't get to 12 unless we add both 1 and 11. But we need a negative 11, so it's not possible. Like, no matter what we do, we're not going to be able to make a minus 1 plus a positive 11 would give us a 10. And then a positive 1 and a negative 11 will give us a negative 10. So therefore, this is prime. Factor a squared plus a b minus 2b squared. Okay, well, we don't have anything we can pull out, so we're going to focus on 20. So that's 1 and 20, 2 and 10, uh, and 4 and 5. So 4 and 5 are going to help us. So we'll have a squared. Oops. A squared plus, we'll actually do minus, minus 4AB plus 5AB minus 20B squared. I'm going to pull out an A. You have A minus 4B. I'm going to pull out a 5B. Mm -hmm. And you'll have a minus 4b again. So bring your outside turn outside parts together. Write your parentheses set only once. And you're good. Okay. Excellent. Ah, now number four is really good because it shows us that again, we have an overall GCF of 5w. When we pull out that 5w, we are left with w squared minus 8w plus 12. We want to focus on factors of 12. That'll give us eight. Again, if you um, multiplied, you would end up getting back to where you started. Okay. Eight does not have anything we can pull out. However, eight is where we start to get this idea of how do we now figure something out where um, the leading coefficient is not equal to one. Okay, this is how you do it. You take the lead coefficient, so eight times the last term, which is three, and we will get 24. You need factors of 24 that will add or subtract to give us the 10. So 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. So 2 and 12 work the best. Now, you have to keep the uh, variable the same for your middle terms because you're replacing your middle term. So we'll have a minus 12y in a positive 2y. Minus 
minus 12y plus 2y gives you a minus 10y. All right, that's why we're replacing it. Now let's go ahead and group. Um, we're going to pull a 4y out, so that'll leave us with 2y minus 3. We do not need to pull anything out because our parentheses sets match. So it would be like pulling out a one. So we have four Y plus one. Sorry guys, getting a little bit tired. I am drinking an energy drink. So hopefully the next video won't be so sloppy. We'll see, all right. Good, almost done with this set. Ah, so this should have been ahead of what we just did, but my apologies, it was not. When we have a situation with an A in the front, so AX squared plus BX plus C, and the GCF of A, B, and C is equal to one, meaning we can't pull anything out. You wanna find the pairs of integers whose product is A, and find the pairs of integer whose product is C, Choose the inner and outer terms. If no such terms, then yeah. So sorry, guys. This is what's in your textbook, but I kind of disagree with it. Um, I'm my method is definitely going to help you out a lot, a lot more with it. So. Let's kind of ignore that, okay? Uh, 10, 19, and six do not have anything in common. We can't pull anything else out. So what we're gonna look at is we're going to multiply 10 by six, and that will give us 60. So we need factors of 60 that are add or subtract 19. So one and 60, two and 30, three and 20, four and 15, 5 and 12, 6 and 10, I believe that's it. So 4 and 15 will get us to 19. So 10R squared, both have to be positive. So positive uh, 15R plus 4R plus 6. Four, 5R, that'll give us 2R plus three, we're gonna pull out a two, which will give us two R plus three. Our parentheses match. So we have five R plus two, two R plus three. Okay. Right. Definitely thought I got rid of everything on here. So I apologize guys. Um, exercise seven. Okay, so we can't pull anything out. So we're gonna look at 12 times 21. That's gonna give us 252. We want factors of 252 that will give us 19. 1 and 252, 2 and 126, 3 and 84, 4 and 63, 6 and 42, 7 and 36, and 9 and 28. 9 and 28 will give us a difference of 19. So we need a negative 28 and a positive nine to give us a negative 19. So 12a squared minus 28a b plus 9ab minus 21b squared. That's gonna give us a GCF of 4a, so 3a, 
minus 7b plus 3b will give us 3a minus 7b. So 4a plus 3b, 3a minus 7b. All right, next problem. Same situation, we can't pull anything out. So we have to do our multiplying. We're gonna multiply eight by 15. Again, I wouldn't worry about the signs until you're, you're going through and figuring out what you need. So that's gonna give us 120. So one and 120, two and 60. 3 and 40, 4 and 30, 5 and 24, 6 and 20, 8 and 15, and of course 10 and 12. All right, so we actually need both of those to be positive. So negative 8. Let's write it in a different color so you're not confused. Negative 8x squared plus 12x plus 10x minus 15. Uh, we can pull out a negative 4x. X minus 3. Pull out a oh, 2x minus 3. Pull out a 5, 2x minus 3 again. Those are the same. Now, the other thing you could choose to do is you could say, I am, I say, I can see a GCF of negative one. So then I would have eight X squared minus 22 X plus 15. So then I'm writing eight X squared uh, minus 12 X plus minus 10 X plus 15. I'm gonna pull out a 4x, leave me with 2x minus three. And I'm gonna pull out a minus five, it'll leave me with 2x minus three. So then I end up with 4x minus five, 2x minus three. Okay, truthfully, uh, oh, and then you have to bring in your, your negative from your, from your uh, GCF, this guy, don't forget him. So you would have to say negative 4x minus 5, 2x minus 3. Okay. Truthfully, I don't really care which one you, you see or which one you go with because um, either way is going to get you the right answer. And this is not one of those situations where seeing the negative is going to help you get a GCF out. But if you see it and you would like to use it, you certainly may. Okay. Um, Let's pull out a GCF of 
of three y. That's going to leave us with three y, four y squared plus 11 y minus three. Okay, let's now take three times four, give us 12. Technically, we'll put the four in the front. Not that it matters, but just for the sake of your process. So one and 12, two and six, three and four. Uh, one and 12 help us get to 11. So three Y on the outside, four Y squared minus Y plus 12 Y minus three. We're gonna pull out a y and have four y minus one left. We'll pull out a positive three. We'll have four y minus one left. Turn or the parentheses match. So we'll bring the outside parts together. So we would have four y minus one times y plus three. Right, good. Okay. All right, again, if you wanted to um, foil this, distribute it and work it all out, we would end up getting to the same answer. Uh, again, I can show you that. It's not a problem to me, but I'm not gonna do it on this paper. So I'll do it the way you should do it for your test. But again, I will show you. So first thing you should say is let any other letter than A be A plus two. And this is just to kind of help you see what's going on. So three, b squared minus 11b minus four. Let's go ahead and take three times four. Again, we'll get 12 factors of 12 that add or subtract to give us 11. It's gonna be one and two again, or one and 12 again. So we're gonna have three b squared. This time we want the 12 to be negative. So for you non-believers out there, now I will go into here. I'll draw some kind of divider line and we'll do the problem long way. Okay, so three A plus two squared uh, minus 11 a plus two minus four. Okay, well, I forgot one thing in here. Before we can say we're done, our problem wasn't given to us in Bs, it was given to us in As. So we have to plug it back in. So three A plus two plus one. And then A plus two minus four. So let's distribute and we would get 3a plus six plus one. Let's combine these like terms here. So that'd be 3a plus seven and a minus two. Okay, if you multiplied everything um, out, you would end up getting to 
what this statement up top simplifies to. So let's let's go back to the hard one just um, just to see how it would go. So the first thing you would have to do is you'd have to foil this. So that would be a plus two times a plus two. Okay, so that would give us a squared plus two a plus two a plus four. Uh, we'll bring the these two together. Let's distribute. Okay, we'll do both of those all at once. So three a squared uh, plus twelve a plus 12 minus 11a minus 22 minus four. Let's bring all the numbers together. So that's uh, negative 22 plus negative four plus 12. That'll be a negative 14. And then let's bring the a's together. That's just gonna be a. So three a squared plus a, let's write that a little bit better. 3a squared plus a minus 14. Okay. All right, now we need to take, let's do that on the, on the next page. Uh, we'll rewrite it, 3a squared plus a minus 14. We'll take three times 14. Three times 14 gives us 42. So we need factors of 42 that will add or subtract to give us a difference of one. And that's gonna be six and seven. So three a squared uh, minus six a plus seven a minus 14. Three a, a minus two, pull the seven out, a minus two. And we have three a plus seven, a minus two. And that matches what we got back here. So you guys can see that it's not impossible to go through and do it that really long way, but that's why it, that's why those two problems alone have extended the video. Okay. Last problem. We're going to take uh, nothing out, nothing comes out. So we'll do six times three. That gives us 18. We need factors of 18. That'll add or subtract to give us 11. So that's two and nine. So six X to the fourth. Uh, they both have to be positive. So plus nine X to the second plus two X to the second plus three. We're gonna pull out a three X squared. It's gonna leave us with a two X squared plus three. Our parentheses sets match already. So three X squared plus one. Whoa. Two X squared plus three. 
All right. And that is it for this uh, video. I apologize if it's a little bit longer, but some of you did ask in class, uh, could we do different things with those other two problems? And I did want to show you. So, all right, that is it for this video. And I will be doing the next video in a few minutes.